as someone with an immigrant background in the United Kingdom and as someone who was raised by Dutch parents, there were certain customs and traditions that were very typically and quintessentially English that were not celebrated in Dutch culture and that my parents did not teach me about. However, because I grew up in England, I obviously would grow up to learn about these different customs and cultures. And however weird they might seem or how weird they might look to me as someone who's looking out on this from a different perspective than someone who is born native English and who is raised in these traditions, I got used to these traditions and I learned about these different parts of culture. And with knowledge comes a great power and of course with knowledge comes understanding. And I think we need a little understanding in the current situation we are in. The topic of this video is going to be Morris dancing. And I'm expressly making this video in response to the attack of several Morris dancers in Birmingham a few days ago who were celebrating Plough Monday, which is the traditional start of the harvest season in England. And I'm making this video to those who believe that this old English practice is racist or a symptom of a white supremacy or a lingering malicious nationalism in England. Now what I'm going to do first of all is play you a few video clips and I would like you to just think about while we're watching them which one of those are racist. Yes he's gone. He is five feet eleven and a half inches tall and he is sixty nine dollars and eighty cents show. But before we go on any further, we're going to pass up the hat in a few moments to take up that little He's too lazy to jerk off. He can only get a gook. He can't even get a regular oh. girlfriend. It's so sad. He's got to get a... Now I'd hope that everyone who saw those clips would then say from seeing these clips that obviously the first one where the man was in full blackface imitating a Jim Crow style figure in the south of the United States in a minstrel show and the two women who thought it was a great idea to shout racial slurs in people's faces that they were quite definitely and certainly racist. And I hope that you would then say, well, the guys who are dancing, you know, being an amusement for a crowd who are watching in these lovely English county towns were not racist. And I would completely agree with you. And those examples, by the way, at least of the dancers, were Morris dancers. And there is definitely an association and a connotation and a definitely a link with dark skinned people in Morris dancing, which is often used as already people saying, aha, it's linked to Africans. It must be racist. But I'm going to look into this, and I, and I think you'll find that actually it's not. And actually there are lots of different explanations for Morris dancing. And just because there are several explanations doesn't mean that only one is right. Because things can have multiple origins. There could be one tradition, which says it comes from X place, and one from Y place. And they can be from both, and that these traditions then meld. So all of these examples I'm going to show in this video, one of them might not be... Um, correct on its own. It might not just have come from here. There might have been several different pools which then made the stream. So Morris dancing, it actually, the name Morris dancing comes from the Flemish word Moriske. And Moriske evolved into the English Morris. And it actually means Moorish. And the Moors, they were indeed a dark-skinned black people from the North of Africa. And as you can see from the picture, this Moor does not look a lot like the guys doing the Morris dancing. Although there are several things that he does have which are linked to the Morris dancing, which I will get into later. Now, obviously, he has black skin, and this could explain why some Morris dancers will paint their faces black. And it is only some Morris dancers. It's only in a few Morris dancing traditions, because there are many Morris dancing traditions all over England in different parts. So you don't just have one Morris dancing tradition where everyone dresses in exactly the same way. In fact, even in the video I showed you some, there were two examples of Morris dancers in blackface who were the marcher Morris dancers on the border with Wales. 
and also one where they didn't, where they had the white handkerchiefs and the white costumes, which were totally different to the other ones. And none of them looked particularly a lot like this Moorish chap we have in front of us. And an important thing to remember about the Moors as well is, you know, people will, will be already going off saying, oh, the Moors, they were the slaves that they brought back from Africa in chains. Not quite. The Moors were actually the black-skinned North African invaders who were Muslim of Spain and attempted to invade France as well to spread Islam throughout Europe in the 8th century. And they really displaced the Christian population or, well, they definitely took over and they forced the Christian and Jewish populations in Spain to pay a tax because they were, as it's called in Arabic, the Dimi. They had to pay, pay this tax that Muslims didn't have to pay. So in actual fact, the Moors oppressed the people in Christendom. And I'm not going to lie and say that Christians have never done anything wrong. Christians have done loads wrong, but so has everyone. So I'm not going to make a point about that. But it's important to remember that at the time of the Morris dancing, not many people in England would ever have seen a black person and far fewer would have ever seen a Moor who were in Spain. And at the time that this is happening, that the Morris dancing starts to become a recorded tradition, which is the mid 15th century, by the way, although I will get into that a bit more later on in the video, the Moors are already losing a lot of territory to the Spanish in La, La Reconquista. And as such, the English wouldn't have seen many Moors at all. And the Moors, they really were, they were invaders from North Africa. And we have plenty of traditions where we honour the invader. And I'm, I am going to say honour because I don't think that there is anything that degrades the Moors in this dance that they are doing. So... Following the same logic, if you are still saying, well, you know, it's racist, they're, they're painting their faces black, they're clearly being very mean to these dark-skinned moors of history. But then wouldn't, can't you say the same for um, Up Heli Ha in Orkney and Shetland, where they celebrate, you know, the Viking past? Because clearly this is appropriation with the longship and the, the horned helmets and all of this. So my next point is about the date and the first date of a recorded Morris dance is 1448 and guess when the first English slave trading expedition was? 1554. So anyone who tries to put a link between this Morris dancing tradition and slavery really needs to look at their timeline because 1448 is far before the English got involved in the Atlantic slave trade which really started to happen in earnest in the late 16th century and this is the date of I believe it was Hawkins first trading expedition where the English actively took part and took slaves from Africa back to England and probably back to some of their colonies as well. So there is a clear difference in these dates. So the people of 1448 could hardly have based their dancing and their apparent, you know, taking the mick out of black people by doing blackface from slaves. It's just impossible unless they were time travelers. I mean, I'm open to all theories unless they were time travelers. Now, there is certainly a Moorish influence in Morris dancing. Of course, the name is a, a clear example here. And one of these examples is the sticks that they use. And originally they were curved. And these were the like the curved Moorish swords which they used. And as well, possibly the blackface might go back to this imitation of the Moors because people in England wouldn't have seen black people yet because the Atlantic slave trade hadn't got started. Definitely not for the English, not even for the Portuguese at this time. So that wasn't a thing. So the only way that they would do blackface was because they had heard from the Spanish or the Portuguese or whoever were fighting the Moors that the Moors were dark skinned and that therefore they would have a blackface. So when doing this Moorish dance or the Morris dance in English, they would also imitate the Moors in this way as well as having these curved swords or sticks which they use and there are there will be then be those who say well this is just another cultural appropriation you know you're stealing this moorish dance and you're going in blackface but by the same logic the native americans who are you know most clearly remembered riding on horses their wind flowing on the open plains well horses were actually brought to america by europeans they were escaped spanish horses which made their way to the plains so then really it would be like going over to standing rock reservation in dakota and saying to you know the lakota who live there saying well you've got to give all your horses back and you can just ride on buffaloes because it's pretty much the same thing you know it doesn't matter and the horses weren't yours in the first place anyway we actually you know we actually brought them over a few hundred years ago so you really need to give them back because that isn't yours 
And as well, it's like telling Wallace and Gromit that actually, no, you, you can't have tea because that's grown in India and it's not yours. So you kind of have to give that back. Sorry about that. Cultural borrowing, it happens all the time throughout history. So even if this Morris dance is based on a Moorish tradition and they are imitating the Moors, who can blame them? Everyone imitates a different culture at some point. As I said, there are a few different theories as to why some traditions of Morris dancing go in blackface. And I think the best one for this is if we look at the time period when this started, or almost certainly started around the 1400s, that it was actually illegal to beg. And people were, especially the peasants, the people working the land, if there was a bad harvest that year, they would go hungry. And because it was illegal to beg, you couldn't just, you know, sit on a street corner and ask for food because then you'd be, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the exact punishment would be, but you would be punished by the magistrates. So what they used to do was they would paint their faces black so that they could not be recognised by the magistrates so that they wouldn't know, ah, John the blacksmith, yeah, I saw you begging the other day, ah, but you didn't. Because if John the blacksmith painted his face black with the charcoals from his forge, then they won't recognise him because he's completely in black. You can't recognise him. And so that is where one idea of this tradition comes from. And this would obviously act as a type of disguise. It's much harder to tell who people were uh, who had these different disguises of these different colours. And they weren't just in blackface. That's something uh, as well that th there are lots of different traditions of these Morris dancers. And they're not all in blackface. Some are going in green face which reminds me a lot of different pagan traditions with the green man and other things like that. Now, another thing I want to mention is that many of the areas which do Morris dancing have strong mining communities and have strong uh, mining heritage. So the maps don't exactly link up, not completely, but I think the ones around London might have been later imports or could have been due to the fact that the Morris dancing was first something that was done at court. And obviously court at that time where the king resided was in London. So that's how it spread there. Although there aren't any pits around London. But as you can see in the northeast, so Durham and Northumberland, they also have a tradition of Morris dancing there. And they often go in blackface as well, actually. Um, and as I said, along the border with Wales, where you had the blackface, lots of coal mines there. So it would make sense. You put get some coal, you wipe it on your face, you've got a different look. You are in a role in a different characteristic while you are dancing, which is one huge thing in these older dances and things that you take on a persona. And one way to do this is to hide your real identity. So people don't know, oh, it's Bob the Fishmonger. It's now this deity. It's now this spirit of the land, of the woods, of the harvest. And they did this in pagan culture as well, when you had people wearing animal skins and animal masks and antlers on their heads. It's all going back to taking on this persona. And I think it's something similar with Morris dancing as well. Once you cover your face in black charcoal or whatever, then you take on another persona. You are no longer Bob the Fishmonger. You are now this spirit. And I often wonder, would people do the same thing with Africa because there are African tribes which go in whiteface, a lot of them. And although you can obviously argue that they don't do this to annoy white people, and I don't think they do, and I think they should continue to paint their faces in whatever tribal colours are the heritage of their tribe because I think that's part of their culture, just like Morris dancing is part of English culture. So I think everyone should just carry on with doing these things because I don't think it's harming anyone. I don't think the Morris dancing is harming anyone. And as I said, if this was in Africa, if this was a tribal tradition there, I don't think anyone would raise anything because they'd say, well, who are you to comment on their culture? And I would argue the same with English Morris dancing culture. I think a lot of the people who do think that it's racist and want to get it banned don't understand quite what the Morris dancing tradition is about. And especially the ones complaining, I think fair enough, if you look into it and you still think, well, this is racist, that's your point of view, then you go ahead and argue and debate. That's all what I'm, what I'm all for. But I just think that a lot of the people arguing the points against Morris dancing don't know a thing more about Morris dancing than that they paint their faces black, which might upset a few people. Now, I know this, this video has been a bit all over the place because I felt I had to make this point about Morris dancing because it's something that I've really enjoyed watching throughout my life. And some of my earliest memories are actually of watching Morris dancers 
uh, because I used to live actually in the southwest in Somerset and around there they used to do things like this as well Morris dancing and with the Maypole the Mayfair the May Queen that kind of thing so it's it's just a really colorful vibrant tradition and all these little you know sometimes you could call them boring little towns they are completely livened up by these Morris dancing things and I think in this current age where lots of our old traditions especially in Europe are going down the drain so for example in my dad's lifetime he saw the traditional costume that uh, once upon a time, you know, uh, 70, 80 years ago, every woman and every man would have worn in uh, his village. He saw that completely disappear. The last person to wear that traditional costume died in my dad's lifetime. And all over the Netherlands and all over Europe, these things are all dying. They are all dying. They're all being forgotten. And quite often they are, you know, people aren't doing enough to save them. And Morris dancing almost died. I forgot to include this earlier, but Morris dancing, the tradition was almost lost forever, but it was revived, and now it's making a steady comeback. You know, it's starting to become a lot more popular, which I think is a great thing, because I think every people needs to know about their roots. Every people needs to know about their history, about their culture, about the old traditions. And this is one way of doing this. People often complain and say, well, the English don't really have a culture. The Scottish do, you know, they're the, the kilts, the haggis eaters. The Welsh definitely do. The Irish do, you know, they're the Guinness drinkers. So what do the English do? Well, this, Morris dancing, that is an English thing. That is a very English thing. So is drinking tea, fish and chips, Morris dancing. As a Dutchman in the United Kingdom, I can hand on heart say that Morris dancing is an English thing. And I want to see it survive. I want to see it continue because I love watching Morris dancers. They're great. I think you guys will as well. So I'm sorry about this video, it's been all over the place, it's not been structured very well at all, and I might take it down in the future, but I just felt I had to make these points. So um, feel free to disagree with me, by the way, but the, this is my opinion on the whole debacle with Morris dancing and whether it should be banned and the black face of Morris dancing debate. So I hope you found this somewhat interesting and entertaining and not too rambly, and I'll be joining you again very shortly with a proper video, I really do promise. So I will see you again soon. This has been History with Hilbert.